You are a leader. That is your destiny.
So I'll get mine out of the way first, Will. So you, you sat with your family watching your first massive movie. Were you nervous sitting next to them? Or? I wasn't nervous, no. It was more about, uh, I just, I wanted it to, I just, I was excited about uh, this moment yeah. since we did the film. I thought, we get a, a night where we can sit in the cinema with all my family and my friends. This is like living a dream for me. This is just something yeah. that you dream about as a kid. And, and that's, no matter what, as I said before, and no one can take this away. This is a huge moment for us. And especially, as I say, us, because it's a journey that me and my mum and dad have, and my sisters have been on since I was a kid. That, you know, they had these dreams that I wanted to do, TV work and be an actor and stuff. And a lot of parents would have said, you'll get real. And, Mum and Dad drove me to every casting and every audition and sat with me for hours and hours and hours and hours and believed, believed in me. Um, and no one else was doing it where I came from. And I, they could have said I was just a dreamer. So tonight was about all of us to say, you know what, thank you so much for believing in me because this is what we've got here. And whatever happens from this point on, they can't take the numbers from me. Thank you for everything. I know my dad's been paying up there, so Dad, if you want to go, I know you, I'll show you the way up. No, he's in a lot of pain, my dad, so that means a lot for him to be here. Thank you for driving him to all these auditions. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a big moment for us, and it means a lot, it means the world to me. So I was chatting to David earlier on, and if you've worked with David Hughes, he's a good boy, I know he's always... He's got a bad breath, breath. go always, <laughs> always, <laughs> always <laughs> <good quality. laughs> Don't shit Bella, don't shit breath. <laughs> He's sitting in Spain. Sorry, well. Dawson, look, <laughs> so David's sitting in Spain in a minute, but he wishes he was here. But he's here in spirit, and now the fact that Paul will mint means he's he's here as well. So he's here in spirit mint. He's in spirit. Spirit mint. Look at that. all week. Huh? So who's got questions for these talented people? Must be some. I have. No, that's all. You go, Barry. I have go, Barry. Is he going to be a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> Producer! Producer's question, you, you can have that one. Um, we would absolutely love there to be a sequel. Of course, it's been, as you can probably tell by the end, and it's been written like uh, we intend to make a sequel. Um, but there is a certain amount of we have to film has to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> That's my backing music. <laughs> <laughs> that, is that is not on the soundtrack, though. Tom Morrison did not do that track. Yeah. 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 Can you hear me if I have to speak like this? Yeah. You shout. I shall. I shall track down. Turn the music on. Right, Michael. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Back up. Yeah. Back, back in the game. Back in the game. Yeah. Trying to make me run. Back in the game. Yeah. So it's very, it's very dependent on the film's performance. Simple as that. Because if the film comes out and it gets reviewed but doesn't do any business, then obviously there's, there's going to be no. We're never going to be able to raise the money to make a sequel if it doesn't perform well when it's out there. So. It, it really comes down to how well it performs in, in the, the market when it's out there, which is a different territory to it's already been sold in. So, you know, good signs so far, the reviews are looking good, and it's just, just gone on sale today. I think we've got bestseller, uh, bestsellers list on iTunes. So. <laughs> Would you be up for a sequel? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Next of course, of course. My mom, I saw me, I was sitting behind my mum and just to see my mum's face went, oh, he's going to die. <laughs> that girl that my auntie Jones had, went, he's going to die. My dad Bill is going to die. Uh, and I, 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 I've, died, I, I've died before on TV and I actually watched the episode with my dad and my dad was crying. I said, no, I'm sat with you. <laughs> so I, was, I was dead on telly, but I was sat next to him and went, I can't watch it. <laughs> so I, I, I got old. You know, line of duty, and my mum said, You could have told me. I said, I said didn't spoil it, mum. <laughs> so, so, nice. so, so I'm glad I survived in this one, so I can be in the next one. Hopefully. Definitely. Give him the second one. Can I ask something about the makeup section, please? Yeah. Because I was at the sequel in London, or at the premiere in London last week, with my son Martin, because he makes the film as well. And I saw Martin Ford there with lots of tattoos mm. all down his face, all from the top down here, all on his hands. Uh, I don't know where else he's got them. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, the on the film, there's not one sign of a tattoo, and I just wondered 
how long it took to actually get rid of them. I think there's lots of people who would probably like to get rid of their own tattoos sometimes. <laughs> but I wonder how long it took to cover them up, you know, in makeup. Can um, anybody answer that? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a... Uh, it's used about an hour every morning just to cover them up. I mean, it, it just to go over all the. We did think about it when we first cast them. We've got tattoos all over them, you know, and, and they're modern-looking tattoos, so they yes. don't they don't work. Um, but you know, we we talked to our makeup designer, Siobhan, and said, you know, we really want to cast this guy. He's, he's great for the role for, the, for both of us. And um, you know, with the, the kit, you're going to be able to work with this. You know, to get rid of the tats. And she said, yeah, I think. I think we can do it, it'll, it'll take an hour to an hour and a half, and after a while, it took an hour and a half to start with, but once she got into a rhythm, it took her about an hour every morning. So, yeah, and it really, it really worked well, eh? So did you, did, you have, did you actually take the makeup off every day then, because... The oh yeah, there's, there's some Jesse up here in the makeup department, they'll probably tell you a bit more about that. It was, I mean, David's intention was always, um, he had this really funny story, so uh, they never really quite made sense, but he was like, um, I, you, watching those Disney movies with my, my young daughter, so I wanted to make a film for her. I was like, pretty gory film for the <laughs> daughter. But, um, but obviously, fairy tale, yeah, it? it's an adult fairy tale, he's inspired for watching countless Disney films with his daughter, but he wanted to make something, you know, which is empowering for women, you know, and that's why... He, he always wrote, you know, a, a female lead that was that was going to be very strong and, you know, sort of independent and uh, would hopefully inspire a, a, a but females in the film. But he does actually, because I worked with him on his first film, and he does actually write really powerful female roles, always. Mm. So I think it is, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they, just, yeah. And they always, um, and they always tend to really... Kill and maim males. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. It was actually the end of his last film. I think Don't so, give away the ending. Yeah. Yeah. So while someone gets someone gets boy, someone gets shot, you know, a male gets shot down there at the end. And at the end of this film, obviously, someone gets slim chopped down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's a little bit weird that yeah. <laughs> Do you want a question? To be honest, um, it was one of the scripts, it was a script that I didn't put down, which is always the best thing when you get a script. You, as soon as you start reading it, you know whether you're enjoying it because you don't put it down and then I read it. <clears throat> and then it was more a part of, um, do I see myself playing the part, which I, I did. I love the character, I love the part. But mainly, the, the thing that's been hampering me, and, and hampers a lot of actors, you get put into a pigeonhole, and you, so you go, oh, oh, he does this, so you do comedy, or you do drama, or you do... No one's ever seen me for this kind of role before because they just don't see me. That's why she came in casting. <laughs> um, but I, it was more of a fear for the other side, thinking, how do I get across that I can play this in a casting room? Um, preparing for it is a different matter. I, I worked out every day you know, and stuff. But before I started the film, for three, I, worked, I think about a month before, I, because I got really bad knees from football injuries, and I was worried that in a sword fight, my knee would pop out. And it wouldn't look so heroic. Me going, hang on, give me a minute. Give me a minute, my knees go. Uh, so uh, so I, tried to, I tried to get myself in decent shape for it, because I knew we'd have chain mail on them swords. Believe me, they're heavy. Um, and there were long battle scenes. Uh, but I really wanted to do it. Um, and it just took these amazing people to say yes to me having the job. And that's what it is in this business. It just takes somebody to, to go, yeah, why not? Because some people sort of go, oh, he's done that before. Let's give it him again. Some people don't like to take a risk. And I'm saying I was a risk in my eyes. I wasn't. But in their eyes, it can be because no one's usually seen me in this role. So it was before the wig and all that sort of stuff goes on, is can you see this be that character? And I believed in it 100%. And I knew what I could deliver. I just didn't want to give it. 
Bye. 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 Because that's what the job is. If, you, if you're not prepared to, to take knocks, then you can't be in the job. Because it's, my mate, uh, Steve Johnson, who's in No Adventure with me, um, he's an average actor, but he's a lovely guy. <laughs> 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 uh, no, he, he'll tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a tough game, you know, but I've been doing it a long time, and, and you know, you've, got, you, you've just got to, you've got to believe in yourself, for one part, and, and everybody's different, you know, you're not going to be right for every role, but the, but, and it, but it does get to you, but when you don't get a role, it makes you hungry for the next, you know, and it's, uh, I, I believe I'm right for every role I go for, I mean, I, I do, I have, I have a lot of self-belief in, in what I think I can do, but it's just convincing other people, and, 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 and you know, every job you do, you've got to learn from, remember, everything you do is a learning curve, you still, I've still not learned, and I probably won't learn until it's over, you just, Every step is another door that comes open. You try and keep open that door to say if you do a comedy, you go, well, there's my foot in the comedy door. Now I want to do a bit of drama, so you've got your foot in that door. And comedy is the best way, I'll tell you this, to learn your timing, which is what acting's about. Timing, delivering a line on time. Comedy, you have to be right timing wise because you have to get the laugh. So that is the best learning curve you can have for any kind of acting. So learning comedy early <clears throat> sort of set me up for doing more drama. And I'm, What's funny about what you said is I haven't done comedy now in about ten years, and I did. It's like it's like I can't do it anymore. No one even offers me a comedy role. It's been drowned in drama. It's because I'm not funny. <laughs> but you know it. To be honest, I'm just lucky to do what I do. And, and, uh, and you know, as I said before, if it all ended tomorrow, we we got to a point here that I can say, Mom and Dad, we we made it. We got here. We're on the cinema screen. You know, this is a massive moment for us. It really is. You don't understand how much it means for tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done, pal. Can you talk us through your audition then? I'll tell you what, it's funny. Do you know what? You know what I'm going to say here, Bob. Right? I got, the, what they said is, um, I went in and did a casting, um, and I went in for the audition, and I, I read the part, but I read the sides wrong, because your sides are like. Oh, that's right. Scenes you get, um, and then I learned what I thought that's easy, it's only a couple of pages, and all I've got to do is stare a bit. Um, I nailed that, and then they said, Well, we'll do the next scene. I went, What? And what I hadn't done is there was another email that I hadn't opened, so and I'm rubbish at reading, so I was like, I always learn my stuff, so I know what I'm going to do when I go in because sight reading is I'm not my strong point. I make words up and it's just not good. <laughs> and also when you do the casting, you want to look people in the eye when you're acting so you can see what you're doing rather than doing this. So I learned that from a young age. So um, when I went in, I wasn't prepared for that second scene and I was like, I was beating myself when I went out. Oh, it's that email. So anyway, they said, they really liked you, but they just want you to put it on tape. So can you record on your phone and send it to them and then see it again? So I'm having one with dad's house in the bungalow. And I said, Mom, I've got a really scene. I need to learn to put my me, me, me phone on to be dad said, I've got my step ladders. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in my dad's bedroom. I've got the step ladders out, I've got my phone trying to balance it to do this scene. I've got my dad's dartboard behind me. And I, I'm always, I said, it's supposed to be a white wall. I said, I'll get you a towel. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Just put a towel over the dartboard. I'm set up and I'll go, right. And I'm going, right, I've got to press record. And I've got to remember everyone else's lines for this scene. I'm thinking, right. And I went, I start acting to the camera, giving it all, then he goes, Shirley, have you seen the remote? <laughs> Shirley! And I went, Paul's dad, I'm doing a recording for the film. <laughs> sorry, son, sorry, I can't find the remote. And then I start again, pops and pans, Bill, it's eat on the table, in the back of your recording tape for the movie. I said, God's on his truth, no lie. And I was doing it for about an hour until I got the recording and I thought I was right to send off to see if I could get the job, and thankfully, I ended up getting the job, but that, that was the moment I said, if I ever do this movie, we'll remember that day. But before when we step on us, it would surely have you seen the remote in the back of the recording for the movie. Robert De Niro started the same about it. It's a true story. Can we get the outtakes of that? Can we get one of them? No, we can't see the outtakes. Oh. Come on, I don't know.
Just a little bit. Clear in his nose! Will. Yes, ma'am. I thought today, the, the day after the cast year, you said you blew him away. Thank you very much. This is Mark Martin here. He's the only one, I think, out of all of us who know how the whole cast who actually is a Viking. It's true, isn't it? Yay! Right, I think you should hear from him. Tell him, tell him how you actually are a Viking. How I acted as a Viking? No, how you are, really, your family is a Viking. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> no, 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 we don't want to use the whole life. We're involved kidnapping everything. Mean violence, uh, warriors. But you are, you are related to the Vikings. Yeah, well, I am born in Sweden and raised in Sweden. My mum's from England, but I lived in Sweden and I do Viking reenactments, so yeah. yeah. There you go. All the stuff he wore on set was all his own gear. It's in a not Viking, but he's in. <laughs> He's like wandering through the forest one day. Well, he just went in the He's in the in the ball, some guy in. That's ready to go. And in his hands, ready. Any other question? Auntie Pam. <laughs> Will, yeah. we're all so proud of you, <laughs> Thank right? You. But is it true you were inspired when you came to see me and <laughs> In Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. It was not too bad when I saw you in Oklahoma doing this. Oh! <laughs> no. And what was it you was in, Pam? I came to see you. Matt Stark, man, and Matt Stark. I oh, know, there was another thing I saw, Pam. He said, oh, go see him. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, the auntie, the auntie does the farming arts, so not, not the auntie Pam. We inspired you, didn't you? You did inspire me that day watching Oklahoma. I thought, never ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> never let it down, so. We've got a question for Jane. You've worked with David before, oh, yeah. Hard Boiled Sweets, yes. which was one of the first, you know, still one of my favourite British films. Right. Um, and then I met David and yeah. become friends over the years and stuff. Both films. <laughs> Very different storylines, but yeah. both feature wonderful ensemble casts. Yeah. The, the difference in casting processes between the two films? Well, or? the difference we have had with Harbour Sweets is that we had literally no money. So everyone had to do it on a deferred payment. So it was all offers, there was no auditions. So I literally just sent lists to David and we decided who was an offer. Um, and and that's oh, and that was it. Well, with this, it had to be really specific. Like I had to like with Will's character, but he had to be able to fight. So I could only bring in actors who who could fight. Um, but also similarly, what I did on Hard Boy Sweets, which which is what I did with Will, was that it was that thing of thinking outside the box and giving actors roles they don't normally get cast in, which obviously is very important to me. Um, so that was a sort of similar thing between the two. But it was a very different process because it was. You know, like we knew we had Terence Stamp on board for this one, so it meant that with Helle, she didn't need to be named. Um, How good was she, by the way? Uh, yeah, I mean, Anna, Anna Dimitri, who played. Um, First actor role. Yeah. yeah, so she basically graduated from drama school four, four months before I started doing the auditions for Helle. And her, and I'd done, I, I, I pre met some girls already, and then her agent called. This is one of the lovely stories. Her agent called and was like, and I do, tr I trust her agent, so, you know, if she's going to ring me and push someone on the phone, I'll listen. And uh, she said, look, I've got this really good girl, she just pushed it louder, she's won all the fight awards, you've got to see her. And I was like, and she was on my maybe list, and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, maybe. She, I'm going to send you a self-tape she did for a show, which sort of is quite similar to what you've done. And she sent it to me, and within two minutes, I rang her agent back, I was like, yep, love her, she's coming in. And then she came, and when she walked in the room, in the audition room, it was, it was that thing, wasn't it? We were just like, yeah, she's it. She could yeah. see that she was a leader of masses. And then, as with Will, what they had to do after they did the um, audition is they then had to do a fight test. So, because if they didn't pass the fight test, they couldn't use them. So it was literally, the, was it the next day, was it? Yeah. <coughs> Two days later. Two days later. Uh, and then, so yeah, she was kick ass as you can see. So yeah, it's a great role. So that was fantastic for her. And similarly, another one for the actors in the audience. Um, Murray, who played Loki, he did one of those things that you all do when you send an email saying, "Here's my photo and CV, um, and you know this is what I've been doing recently." And he sent, and he'd done loads of sort of 
Viking type films and he was perfect. And I was like, that is exactly what we're looking for. Sent him to David. And we did actually uh, test him for another role, which he wasn't quite right for, the king. Um, and then we cast him as Odin, which makes sense. So he was a, you know, it was another sort of similar thing. It was just that, that chance moment where you get the email, you get the contact, and then it was that sort of sort of role. Wow. It was a lot of, uh, it was a lot longer process on this one, really. So what's the sort of time period from it? So you go around, I need to cast this thing right now. Let's cast. What's the sort of? Well, sort look, of I was actually on board before Dee because I was in the development stage, so we were trying to sort of get names attached, and that sort of went on for a while, and then Dee came on board. So well, I've been on it for three years, three years? Yeah, three years. Uh, and so initially it was just sort of trying to get um, names attached so that we could get finance, because we didn't have any finance. Um, and then once we had Terence, we knew we were sort of away. And we did have some other people attached that we lost towards the end. This is often the way on low budget films. So I got the job. No. <laughs> no. That one can't do it, get willing. <laughs> it wasn't your character. Um, and then we just sort of kept going and they got, you know, they got bigger budget films, so we lost the last bit. So um, we had to do some self taping for those roles, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, it was a long process, but I think once we knew it, it was green lit and we were ready to go, that was like, we started, we met the Hellos in like February, didn't we? Yeah. And then yeah. we started meeting, when did we meet you, like March or April or something, June maybe? I can't remember last yeah. month. So it was like, <laughs> it was like, it took a good six months of doing the main sort of cast, but we had, it was sort of a good couple of years of just sort of sending out offers for big names, hoping they'd get attached. Terence came back to us within five days. He loved the script that much. Yeah. And you got Paul Freeman back yeah. from Horror Boys. Yeah, Paul well, Freeman. He's, he's Paul Freeman's in, brilliant. He's, he's been in day, every single thing of the day's done, his first short film. And um, how was the film? That's all. Apparently, uh, oh, can I just say one thing about the, they said about the fight thing, the fight, um, uh, we have the, the fight uh, audition. I've done the sword work before, and I was in Merlin, I played the bad guy in Merlin on Night Valley, and, and I had to do sword work. Where the, the, the lad who was doing sword work with me said, this was a gunfight, he shot me by now, like eight times. Because I just kept hitting with the sword. And then in this one, um, Jude, who's the stunt uh, coordinator, he organised all the stunts. He actually trained under Jackie Chan, he's an amazing stunt guy. And then they put me in with his guy and he said, uh, and we did it, we did this routine, and then he went, well, it looks like you're not, you're not trying to go for him. Just go for him and he'll get out of the way. I went, all right. And I went for him and I stabbed him. <laughs> and I went, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, and I thought, I've had it, they're not going to give me the part now if I keep stabbing the actors. Thankfully with a wooden sword, it, was, it wasn't a metal, it was a wooden sword. But he said, no, you're right to go for him, I should have got out of the way, and I went, yeah, you should have. And I got, so it, it was one of those moments where you just think, you know, when you go and mess it up, I really wanted to part, and every time you do something wrong, you think, oh, please, don't let that get in the way. And um, thankfully I got the job, anyway, but it was, story works out, it's not so much. Anybody else? Anybody else? I don't teach you all. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because of his family. I'm just walking down the street and I go, Auntie Joe. Auntie Joe. I'll call you Auntie Joe. It's me, Auntie Joe. Go on, Auntie Joe. What I want to know, Willie, is really, was those swords as heavy as they should have looked? You know what? What they do is they do a take. So they say, right, you do one swing, then you're going to block it. And they do that with the heavy sword, and then you had other swords where they had, um, it was like a, a mixture, wasn't it? So they had like a very thin, you can explain this, it was like a very thin like metal, and then, and then on the outside it wasn't, it was flimsy. And, and some of this, it, it was like hard to stop them because they wobble like that, yeah. and it didn't look as good as it <laughs> So you'd be fighting and they'd be all wobbling all over the gaff like that. So what they do is they cut from the close-ups, and you could do close-up stuff with the real sword, and then the wide stuff, when you're really going at it, with the lighter sword, and if you caught anybody, it wouldn't do that much damage, and also you could throw them around. Believe me, that sword that I had, there when I'm holding it up, looking all hard, <laughs> you could swing it once and you'd be finished. You'd go, that's it. If you missed him, you'd go, let's just leave it. Because you wouldn't be able to carry on. If it was that heavy, you'd go, what? And then you'd go, Pfft, and you'd go, right, that's it. Because you'd, just be, you'd be finished, it's pointless, it's so heavy. And I was saying then, if people, they actually use them swords, they must be hard as nails. They were so heavy, the proper swords. And we had sword guys on set all the time, so they'd swap it and say, we need the real one now, and you'd 
swap it out and they blow it all up and then you go at it. It was honestly like living a childhood dream doing this yeah. film. You imagine as you're a kid and then you have them sticks and you're doing sword fighting. I was doing this at 40 years old. It was, it was fantastic. It was just, honestly, it was just... It was just <laughs> <laughs> hey, how old? You don't look it. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's what you call a good living, now. Yeah. Yes, Mike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shall I leave? <laughs> now, this will surprise you, I think. Uh, it was spot on. Uh, we work in dollars a lot in the so It was two million dollars. That, yeah, that in the film world is, is low, but low, it's low budget. It's really low budget. Uh, Billion! <laughs> uh, it's, it's all about we, 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 you, the way you make money in films and how you try and um, generate income you by selling the rights to the film to territories so we've already done a lot of that so we're getting we've obviously got to pay back two million dollars so we're, we're paying getting some revenue back from selling the rights we've got to sell every territory gives you more more uh, more money back so we've probably sold about what you call that half the world so far the territories you can sell to um, and then the other the other revenue streams obviously from the film selling tickets DVDs iTunes and all that and, TV deals and all that, and you get that. So the better deals you get there, the more DVDs you sell, the more iTunes clicks you get, the, the more it gets. So it's... So expectations will be $2 million worth of investment. How much will you get back? The film has just come out. The sales back, we will probably, you come, you'll come slightly under. So the film has to perform in the market. So if it does well in a territory, and we get what we call overages, as in the distributor gets enough money back so they start giving you some of the oil split. Then, um, then it's all about how the film performs. So yeah. Yeah, basically, if, if we go over, if we go over two million, you know, and the investors have got their money back, then it's very easy to go back and go, hey, we're just giving you your money back plus your premium. Let's do another one. And of course, if you just pay them back, then most of the time we're going to do it again. And if you don't pay them back, they'll probably won't do it again. Anti pam. Anti pam. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, sorry, I'm not letting you finish. No, you have to keep going. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, yeah you t so initially you tend to do the run where you're doing the theatrical release and then you, the iTunes and DVD, because you want people to be paying for a, a DVD and that, and then the old, the old TV deals usually come six months, 12 months later, because you're trying to generate as much income paying for the DVD and clicks on Amazon Prime and that type of thing. And then it might come available on a streaming service like Netflix or or if a TV deal pays you more, you know, you're basically looking for who's going to pay you more money there. But yeah, usually about six months down the line. So it's just come out now. So uh, towards Christmas time, we'll be looking at that. Tell all your friends. Yeah, the Get technology the now is better for us because technology means you can download it uh, straight away and you, yeah. we can, you can start earning money straight away from iTunes and downloads and already it's... it's been a bestseller, yeah, so yeah. If we just that's what this is about: spreading the word and getting it out there, and, and getting it downloaded and getting it around there, so we can make a sequel. It's also about sort of uh, like if you're taking pictures this evening, <coughs> tweet them out, put them on your Facebook profile, tag them of God's Warriors. If you didn't like it, don't. Tweet. If you didn't like it, keep it to yourself. Yeah, if you don't like it, <laughs> don't worry about it. But if you do, and obviously, hopefully, you all did, then do share across your social media platforms. <coughs> Daddy, you coming out, man? Yeah. I'll walk you. Come on. Thanks, Will. So I've got some. Yeah. 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 I'll come back here in a minute. I just want to just take, make sure okay. he knows where he's going. Is your question for Will? Well, yeah, go on. It might not hit the big screen. Oh, big. Really? No, it's not that things cost a lot of money. I it's can, about I can let. Yeah, it's yeah. about distribution. It costs a lot of money. It's a gamble. Um, I'll, I'll let you dis yeah, dis yeah. discuss it. Where's my dad? Are you coming out, Dad? Pleasure, all right. Probably more than you see. He's got a really bad background. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, essentially, you know, the theatrical run. We're having a, a generated theatrical run now. <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're having this, this our, our screen theatrical run now. 
The reality is with genre films, uh, which this is, it's an action adventure, uh, it's really quite rare these films play in the cinema. You, you know, you're talking Mission Impossible, not quite on the same level as that, nearly. Um, they don't tend to read a genre film, they tend to play in the cinema. Other films are genre, if you do a theatrical one, you're probably going to lose a lot of money. So it's, we weigh it up and you think, it's good for promotion, but you're going to lose money. So on this one, it, was, it wasn't really, it's not worth it to, to do it. So we're generating a bit of buzz around the hour screen things we're doing now. And then we can go straight to MM where we're going to get a better, better return on investment. You're welcome. So the film does come out at the end of the month on Blu-ray, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, the cinematography of that film was amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's shot for the big screen, it's shot for more you know, lenses, it's uh, cameras we're using, the lens we're using, all designed for big screen, so yeah, it does hold up well. Just say goodbye to the guy. Am I going to see you now? Yeah, we all shot up in um, we're up in Northern Ireland in uh, Coleraine, and then uh, we shot in Snowdonia as well for the pickup shoot for like four days. But yeah, we we're mainly up right up near the Giants Causeway if anyone's ever been there on the north coast of Northern Ireland. Pretty cold, wasn't it, in the summer? <laughs> yeah, you, you could have rain, wind, snow, and sun in one day. Yeah, on like June, June and July. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, it's all, it's all this <laughs> we had two scenes from uh, Gothenburg that we filmed uh, three and a half years ago. So. Yeah, yeah, we, we mixed them in as well. Santa Faris. Yeah. Mark yeah. was a part of the original photos, wasn't he, that, that yeah. he did of the, of the, the press pack? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're in the trailer as well, the original teaser. Yeah, but they hid me well, so. <laughs> <laughs> So you've all this is a question for all three of you. So it's uh, it's a five week shoot, I believe. Mm -hmm. The film has five been and five and a half. Uh, what's your favourite? So instinctively, your favourite memory from the entire project of each of you. What's the one thing that springs to mind that you go, do you know what I'm going to remember that? Um, the producer's quite painful going for a shoot, so when we when we wrap, <laughs> <laughs> he just avoids us. <laughs> oh, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, no, but you know, it's. I think seeing you know some of some of the action scenes, I really like like action and choreography, and seeing some of them come together. When we start, we started shooting the first bit of action. I just really love how that's put together, and that was probably my, one of my favourite parts. So. Jane, you're, fant you're fantastic as a producer. You're so easy to come to, and also he's a massive part of, of me getting the part straight away. You, you really <coughs> are, so I, yeah. owe, I owe a lot. Yeah, well, you're now the audition, so... Yeah, well, I'll watch it. Once you go over the dartboard, then, in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but, you know, in the room, in the room, she was, she was behind me from the start, so Dave was just incredible. Mm -hmm. It means a lot to me. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Uh, for me, on set, uh, my, I think it would have to be when Anna came in and did her audition, because it was like we got our lead. That was my moment of saying, yeah, we have her. Mm. On mine... Mine's a bit more, um, it's, it's different. Mine's probably when we was on the beach shooting the arrows in fire. Yeah. I kept on just looking, going, this is epic, this. <laughs> Do you know, you stood around, everyone's got flaming bow and arrows, saying, Valhalla, and all this stuff. It was just like, man, I'm in a movie here. <laughs> dressed, <coughs> dressed with long grey hair in a Viking outfit with people with flaming arrows stood either side of me. It was proper, it was like, hang on, I'm going to film here. <laughs> And I know it sounds a bit daft, but yeah. no, but it was it was it was a proper moment to go, Jesus, you know what I mean? It it, it just it just looked epic, even though you you know sometimes what you see on the screen isn't what you see you know in front of the camera when you're shooting. It doesn't look as amazing as that. You're doing it, doing it, doing it again. That and the battle scenes when I was learning and doing the battle scenes with the sword and. And if you're one of the heroes, you get to kill people. They can't fight back. <laughs> it was great. I, just, I, killed, I was killing like 50 people a day. <laughs> I was like, who are we killing today? Get him right. What, what have I got to do? <laughs> you know, that. It was just great. You know, you just don't get to do that often. So honestly, it was a piece that I just, I was just buzzing going into work every day and coming, going into makeup looking like, not this because I'm dressed up tonight, but yeah. going, coming out as, you know, chain mail and wig. And I looked at myself and I thought, I'm going to film you. So, no, buzzing, I, I love the whole thing. Yeah. Thank you very much. It seems strange from a young lad killing all these men. <laughs> you can't even kill a fly. It's true. <laughs> I don't kill flies, I don't kill anything. Put a wig on you, I just Put a wig on me, I'll cut your head off. I noticed that on the final battle scene, you were the first one out. I was the first one out. I wanted to 
continuity. Oh, yeah, but, but continuity, I mean, I wasn't the first one that met him, was <laughs> 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 